play uh, Albert, who's this innocence that I don't think we really get anymore. You know, this is a 15 year old who hasn't been exposed to television or the internet, and he's a very lonely child in an isolated part of Devon. And when his father buys this horse and this horse comes into his life, it kind of becomes everything that he doesn't have and it becomes his confidant and I think eventually it forms a sort of a brotherly figure for him. So when it gets sold to the, uh, to the cavalry in the First World War, you know, the stakes are high enough that Albert risks his life to go off to the trenches to uh, try and find him. I'm his mum. <laughs> um, and in really struggling with poverty and then I lose my son to the war. I play Captain Nichols who is um, the cavalry officer who arrives in Dartmoor scouting for mounts for the North Somerset Yeomanry. And it's just on the point of war having been declared on Germany in the story. I promise you that I'll look after him. And if I can, I'll return him to your care. And he's um, an expert artist and a very good drawer and sketcher. And Major Jamie Stewart is his superior officer. I'm, I'm sort of introduced at the point where you get to the um, cavalry depot and that all the horses are in training for manoeuvres uh, before being um, transported and going to the front, which wasn't really a front then. At the beginning of the war, it was much more mobile before trench warfare. Let every man make himself and his country proud. Some young actors are very interested in celebrity and glamour and all of that. And Jeremy, <laughs> bless him, is interested in being a good actor is so lovely and he is a good actor he's a good actor but it's just like he was so hungry to learn he was like a sponge and you know every day was a every day was like a year at university wasn't it, it was so you know I mean the whole, just just the learning curve you know I kind of think it's more like a learning step each day you know it's because mm. uh, I you know starting from nowhere you know I've never acted film so you know Steven Spielberg was not just my director but also my film acting teacher and um you know, who, who better to have? <laughs> I was coming to the end of making Thor and um, I got the call to go and meet him over at his office in Universal at, at uh, Amblin. And um, I just remember saying to myself, just those words alone are exciting, yeah. aren't they? I mean, that's just <laughs> yeah. a dream moment. And driving over there, and it's a two hour drive from the west side of LA near the coast where I was staying, and thinking, just don't, just be yourself. And um, I, I thought this will just be the first of a long line of meetings and auditions. I'll probably have to go on tape and do a screen test. And we sat down and for some reason talked about um, Guinness for the first 20 minutes <laughs> and Peter O'Toole and all of these things that we shared uh, a passion for and then he said do you ride and I said yes I do a bit and he said well I'd like you to do it and I nearly fell off my chair. I had to do 20 auditions. No, no. <laughs> uh, no it was very similar. I, I, I read the scripts. It was in utter secrecy in a locked room a week later they said well what, what did you think? And I went, well I really liked it. Well we'd like you to do it. I went, oh, I see. What? <laughs> you know? yeah, yeah. Uh, you it, was, it was more one. for me to judge the script of the past in a way. It was, it was extraordinary. And, you know, who, who wouldn't sweep the stage after he's left the building, in the case of Spielberg? You know, it's, it's a fantastic privilege to work with him in, in any guise. So, um, yeah, I just jumped to the chance. It is a good day. Whatever you, whoever you've worked with, when your agent calls and says, Steven Spielberg is at Claridge's and would like to take tea with you. He is an iconic American filmmaker. And also for had to have him come and fall so in love with such a quintessentially British subject and really honor it in a Hollywood way was thrilling. 